Hello, people of the internet. It's your boy, and we're back here at Hot Tongue Pizza. Alex Coons, your hostess with the mostest, and I'm bringing you another fantastic episode of Pie to Pie. This one with Hunter of Detroit Pizza Depot. Hunter has been running this square pie empire out of a small food kitchen, a cloud kitchen down by USC. For all y'all that don't know that, that's downtown Los Angeles or just right outside of downtown. Hunter started popping up in Michigan out of a food truck that was later shut down because of the bureaucracy from the Chamber of Commerce. Hunter drops a pretty big bomb that I was not aware of when we sat down for the pod. He's actually opening up a brand new brick and mortar, second generation smart man in Hollywood, uh, an untapped market for DSP. And that's a little abbreviation, an acronym for Detroit style pizza. Uh, I got that one from Mr. Mark Schechter, DSP. It sounds like ESP, but that's a completely different thing. That's when you can read people's minds. Uh, I'm, I'm working on that. I'm not there yet. Uh, we talk about what Detroit style pizza is to him, to other people, the great Sean Rendazzo. We talk about where Detroit style pizza came from, the pans that he cooks in and how he seasons them, raw or par-bake. Is there a right one? We talk about bringing his brother down here to help with the brand new shop opening up in Hollywood in May. Uh, If you're listening to this uh, hot off the presses, that's only a couple weeks away. His brother made it, just so everyone knows. His brother did make it to, uh, to Los Angeles. He is safe and sound working with Hunter now. We talk about being so close to USC, staying open till 2 a.m. That is a late, late night. But uh, that's where they're doing a whole hunk of business. Late night, a late night slice. Uh, We talk about his partner, investors, and of course, we talk about Margaritaville. And one of the greatest artists and chillest dudes of all time, rest in peace, Jimmy Buffett. This was a great conversation. Hunter was a pleasure. One of those conversations when I sat down with Hunter, I was like, this is going to be a good time. He felt He felt like a friend. It was a good conversation. I hope you enjoy it. There was a lot of laughs, nugs of information as always. Ladies and gentlemen, Hunter from Detroit Pizza Depot, Jimmy Buffett forever. I hope you're sipping a margarita up there in heaven, brother. Let's go. Before we start the pod, I want to shout out our sponsor, Zabs. Zabs is incredible. Both their hot sauce sit on every table at Hot Tongue. Their St. Augustine and original are mind-bending. I'm talking naturally sweet heat and their signature slow burn. They got this secret pepper from Florida called the Da Teal. It is hot. It is sweet. It is perfect on pizza, on eggs, on anything. And I know that anyone who tries it is going to love it. If you don't know about Zaps, you got to check them out. And you know who put me on their hot honey, which I think is better than all of them? Nick Camacho. Shout out the man, the myth, and the legend for putting me on this. I didn't even like hot honey before this, but Zabs changed my mind. I wouldn't put it on every table at Hot Tongue if I didn't believe in how much it could enhance pizza. Do yourself a favor and go check out Zabs. You will not be disappointed. Anyways, I'll stop talking now. Let's get to the pod. Let's go. Let's go back. So you are in a ghost kitchen, but it functions. You have your own like drive up situation. Right, right. So you open the door. Well, they but they they hit the, the doorbell. Ding dong. Yep. And you're like, yo, man, it's Hunter. What's up, dude? What's up, guys? Welcome it's to Detroit me. Pizza Depot. And you're cooking out of like a 400 square foot kitchen? 260. Woo! Yeah, yeah you sent me a picture. It's, and it's I tight. was like, I don't think this desk it's is going to fit. That's why we're here. Yeah. We're at Hot Tub. We, we have to be but here. But Hunter is cooking out of a kitchen by USC. Yes. Downtown. Yes, correct. Uh, but you're, you're, and how long have you been there? So we launched September 1st of 2022. Okay. So. Year and a half, minute. roughly. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's already time to move. We're exploratory phase of, like, moving right now. Okay. So, you know, we've had, there's been so many, like, spots that we've went and looked at. Like, you had Bronwyn and Jose, I think. Yeah. Right? I mean, we looked at that spot in Echo Park. Like, well, you didn't just, want it? 
it was just like it was like 100 square feet more than what we had already had so yeah. it was like we wanted to expand a little bit more than that got it like to us it was kind of like it'd be just a all right, we're moving here and moving our customer base up more north yeah. and being where we're at right now next to all the students and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, so we ideally like a spot closer to right where we're at that's just a little bigger that we can function a little bit more. I feel like, have you been looking like aggressively? Yeah, we. I mean, if we can get a spot, there's a spot downtown that we looked at that was super promising, but then it's just like, now I'm dealing with the brokers and some of the brokers are really good to work with and some suck, like no communication, like all of that. So also it's just like, all right, let's have the right piece money wise to make that transition. Like, Hey, how long is that layover going to be? We don't want to like not pay our staff for a month yeah. or two months. Like then they're going to go get other jobs and Work, working with a broker, just for people that don't know this, I didn't know this for a while, you don't have to pay a broker. No. They, yeah, they do. They you If you find a good broker, they can they can get you into a spot because they're working. That's like what they do. Right. Working with, we were independently doing that. So yeah. once we like hired our own broker, he's been going balls to the wall. Yeah. Like, hey, here's this, here's this, here's this. You want a tour, you want a tour, you want a tour. So since we did that about six months ago, it's been like really taking off. So um, we're actually going to launch like a second location in Hollywood. Uh, we signed, we're in escrow right now. So as soon as that gets posted, we get the keys. Bada boom, bada bing. Wait. So you're trying to get out of your situation <laughs> in the ghost kitchen. Correct. To like a brick and mortar situation, right? Right. Absolutely. Are the location in Hollywood, is that a brick and mortar? Yes. That oh. is a brick and mortar. Well, interesting. Right. So, so you didn't want to lose your customer base, but now you're going to Hollywood. So the Let's plans, go through that. Right. So take me on that journey. I'm all over the place early morning. I love but, it. I uh, love it. Back in like June of this past year, we had an opportunity to go into uh, a spot like right on sunset. That ended up falling through. My lease was up in June. So I moved out there. And as soon as when I moved out to LA, it was like, hey, don't want to deal with traffic. Live close to where you work. Yeah. Like, that's what I was always told. Moved out to Hollywood. So that didn't happen. Been traveling to and from downtown from Hollywood. And if you live here, you know how much of a pain that kind of is at times. Yeah. Uh, especially, like, I live right next to the bull. But moved to Hollywood. So we'd always kind of wanted a, a space around Hollywood just in general. Um, and then, like... Why just, Hollywood? So, like, working with the third-party delivery apps a lot, they offer so much information. So we want to leverage that as much as possible. So when we saw, like, Hollywood's demographics, like, their order rate in that five mile radius, like based on where all these kitchens are at, is top of LA. So that area- They gave you that information? Yes. Well, that's very nice. Right. We've been working on partnerships with some of the apps and they want us to come in and be exclusive. We obviously are like, eh, we don't really want to do that unless you can meet a certain financial goal for us because if you can't, then we lose a lot of our business. Um, so. Doing that, these apps are giving us all that information to kind of go and see, hey, these customers, this is the average order volume, this is the average or order number, you know, and Hollywood was number one in all of LA in terms of their demographics that yeah. they gave us. Are they true or not? Who knows? I hope so, but. Who, who, who gave you these, this information? I mean, Uber Eats, DoorDash. And, and, and it was all the same information? And the Ghost Kitchen company that we work with. like, And they all gave the same information? Yeah. Okay, well. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, that, that's so why Hollywood. So where, where in Hollywood? Uh, so Franklin Ave. Uh, we're like kitty corner from Capitol Records. Um, it's right next to For the Wind Burger. Yeah, is it in a is it is it like a little strip mall or something? It is, yeah. yeah, it's a little strip mall right there. Um, something kettle in there. There's a liquor store in there for the win. There's supposed to be a dispensary opening in there, um, but yeah, we saw that and we were just like, got to jump on it. Existing pizzeria, not a lot of key money. What was so, the pizzeria before? It was called One Stop Eat. I don't think they were. They also owned the liquor store, so or will lease the liquor store. So th I think they were more so just trying to get out of it or trying to make some extra money making pizza over there instead yeah. of like just selling it 
like in a mini little mini oven. I, How what's the what oven do they have in there? They have like a huge Blodgett double okay. deck. Um, and what we, do you use in the ghost kitchen? We use conveyor. Okay. So and are you going to put a conveyor in there? Yeah. Right. So yeah. we're looking at a triple deck like edge oven yeah. just because it doesn't it doesn't require as much electricity. Um, so you don't got to go get the 220 hookups, mm -hmm. which, you know, you got to pay 10 grand for mm -hmm. three of those mm -hmm. to run the wiring and shit like that. So, and I've just seen really good things about the edge ovens. So yeah. that was like, all right, yeah, why not go with those? Good option to go in there. Um, got a nice little space. I mean, really, we're going to throw some paint on it. What's like it? our goal is to be open on May 1st there. So when did you sign the lease? We're like about to sign the lease. Oh, Every so it's not lease. even fucking leased out yet. Nope. Damn, dude, I'm about to go look at this spot after this pod. Well, they're they they <laughs> they. they ain't. I'm about to go look at that <laughs> spot. What's <laughs> the square footage, <laughs> my boy? <laughs> about 800. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that sounds perfect. So like minimal seating in there. Uh, Any yeah. There's seating? like yeah. There's like you could probably fit 20 to 30 people okay. in there. Maybe. I mean, it'd be tight for 30. Yeah. But like you know. You I could. feel like that's a great great location because you're oh. you're right on the outskirts of east hollywood where hollywood's starting right you have los Feliz that you can still get to oh yeah and that is that is a you're right next to the freeway koreatown's not too far that's like a pretty banging yeah that's a banging area yeah uh, we that's that's where we wanted to be so between that next spot would try to be out like west side culver city area but what was the key money uh, it was, well, they asked like a hundred K. So did you get it down? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. So it ended up being 85, 90. Nice. Um, which yeah. is great. That yeah. is great for yeah. being able to open up a month later or two months later. It yeah. is that you they, already certified. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, they were in operation till like January or February. Uh -huh. Um, but again, like they weren't doing much. They were only open till like six o'clock. They're open from like 12 to 6. Yeah. So it's like basically just running it as a lunchtime slice shop. Yeah. Which there's a lot of activity over there. So there's good justification to that. You have what Yelp said was the best burger in California right next door. So, well, we all know Yelp is very credible. So, <laughs> so credible. It is uh, uh, one of the most credible. Uh, I would suggest that you read our negative reviews before you read our positive reviews just to see how crazy people are. Well, that's where the truth is. It's in the one stars. It is. I, you know what I'm saying? I love the one stars. Yeah. Like, they, I, honestly, they give me motivation. Do they? It makes me lose hope on humanity, or humanity, usually, most of the time. I question human beings. I don't, though, because those people are the most outspoken. So, for every one of them, there's 10 just great customers. Regular people? So, I'm just like... That's a great oh, way man. of looking at it. But sometimes, it's like, Wow. The loudest voice in the room is the scariest. It's, it, it is scary sometimes, yeah. especially if it's from a very big human. <laughs> then I get like, you know, like Dude, if, the rock, you, if the rock is I, I, coming in and leaving me uh, a one star review. Like he, if he would come in and beat my fucking ass. Like I, if he gave me a one star review, like, hey, I feel like I'm going to come beat your ass. This pizza sucked. Then I'd be kind of like, you'd worry right, about it. Hey, we need to beef up security over here for the next. I feel like the the rock would smell what you're cooking, and he would like it. I he probably would. Yeah. Uh, well, that is really exciting about this new spot. Thank you. How many how many staff members do you have right now? Uh, so we have six, including myself. And how many are you going to hire out for this new location? Well, so my brother's actually moving out here from Michigan. Okay. We're going to go start that spot. I'm still going to be involved at the other shop a couple days a week, and kind of go from there. We really want to just try to get that spot to uh, a place where we can start, we can open for our hours that we're open for downtown. Like we'd like to keep the same schedule across the board. Just, yeah. There's a thing with consistency that people like, so don't want to not do that. Um, but yeah, we're going to, we're going to run it for the first little bit, kind of like soft opening, be open from four to 10 or four to 11 or mm -hmm. something. Um, Probably not be open on Mondays and Tuesdays, but just kind of get it up and going, start producing revenue for the first month, and then hire out, open from, you know, 11 to 12 uh, during the weekdays and then until 2 a.m. Uh, Friday and Saturday night. You're going to do late night there, too? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's just, for us, it's like, why not? 
um, if we can hire people and people want to work, like to me, like that was my biggest fear about moving out here. It was like, hey, actually hiring people just because I didn't know the landscape. I don't know. It's completely different in Michigan than it is out in California. And honestly, like utilizing college students, utilizing uh, the trade programs, like we have, we've hired like three people from uh, the LA uh, Culinary, LATTC, I think uh -huh. it's called. Um, but we've hired like three people out of there just by reaching out to them to yeah. get like students in that want to work in pizza. I feel, I mean, my first job was in pizza. I feel like working at a pizza shop is just a cool environment to be a part of versus like, hey, do you want to come work at McDonald's or, hey, do you want to go, you know, work somewhere else? Like, well, just Mickey, pizza's sweet. Mickey I, D's is paying $20 an hour now. Mickey so D's that's is a, paying that's $20 like an hour. That's like a pretty so, sweet job. I mean, you got to, like, do you want to work at McDonald's or do you want to work at a pizza shop? I mean. That's what I'm saying, for $20. For $20? I mean, that's, that's what our employees are going to be making. I really? Mean, like, it's like. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Minim minimum wage at Detroit Depot is twenty dollars. Not yet, but once that law goes into effect, like I don't think we really have a choice to not hire those people out at twenty dollars an hour because yeah. to me, they're worth they're worth more than you know. Try like I don't want to compete with the fast food industry. Yeah. But and at the same time, like I want to offer them something that they can you know be proud of and of course you know i don't want we're not i don't want to start somebody out at 15 dollars an hour it's like especially out here like in michigan you might be able to make it in california like there's no like there's just no way yeah i just can't i'd feel bad i yeah. mean we and like tip wise we get a fair amount of tips from our pickup customers but they're not much but like all that goes to the employees obviously like yeah. i'll never take a tip my gm never takes tips it's just for like the people who are working hourly, like, yeah, they're getting all that. So do you have partners? Uh, yeah, I have, I have one partner. Um, and then we founded most of Detroit pizza Depot with, uh, investment money from just friends, angel investors, yeah. uh, you know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, my partner's, uh, Zach Weigel. Uh, he owns a, uh, well, he's the founder of a nonprofit organization called Gamers Outreach. Um, and what they do is provide uh, these things called go-karts. Uh, so they're like video games with, uh, you know, monitors just on wheels. So they're designed for hospitals to get around um, and be able to go from room to room. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, so he founded that. He moved out to L.A. We were actually from the same hometown. Um and he came out here and was just living downtown. He's like, hey, there's nothing like jets out here. And I was like, yeah, that sounds super dope. Like, Were you I'm, already cooking pizza in Detroit? I was, yeah. So I had a food truck back there. And it actually just came at the perfect time, quite honestly, because he, he had reached out to me over Facebook. And my dad was super involved in our community. So he coached him he coached me he coached his little brother so I was more so friends with his little brother but I always knew of him um and yeah he reached out to me on Facebook and was like hey you make a killer pie like what do you think about coming out to LA I was like actually this is perfect timing like yeah like let's fucking go uh, I've never lived outside of Michigan so I just thought why not take the chance I was going through uh like some problems in my hometown which I ended up moving back to post COVID to do Detroit style pizza yeah uh just because all of the events got shut down I actually used to use Gosney ovens just shout like out a Gosney lot of, a lot of people the Gosney collective uh but rock box two rock boxes in my food trailer did Neapolitan style pizzas would go do events around the state Lots of breweries, lots of grad parties, stuff like that. So you weren't um, cooking squares? I wasn't at okay. the time, no. So 2019, I started doing that. Uh, then COVID happened. Wah, wah. Yep. And I was like, all of the events that I was doing, like the breweries were like, nah, no food trucks around here. Like, couldn't do it. Weren't essential. Like, I think I did one grad party that whole summer. So I was just like, this this is horrible. So I was like, all right, new game plan. Uh, so the next year I uh, talked to a bakery in my hometown, ended up partnering up with them. They had a huge parking lot. Um, so we kind of made that like a little mini food truck court 
I got two uh, big electrical outlets hooked up. So basically I could just plug in. So essentially I was uh, just like a small brick and mortar that was kind of parked in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. um, had power on, you know, we could leave like, it's basically just like a little mini kitchen that didn't have to unplug. So like all the food truck stuff, catering stuff. Health um, department there ever give you a, a hard time? No. No? No. They just, hey, if you're plugged in. You're good to go. You're good. All right. So I had an STFU, which was like, we, you could store food on the truck as long as it was plugged in. So okay. STFU, not shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, that's what it's I was a, thinking. I was like, shut the fuck it's a, up. It's a special, <laughs> uh, it's special transitory food unit. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I was just like, well, Detroit pizza travels better. Like Neapolitans don't really travel that well. Um, so I was like, hey, park this deliver pizzas because there was there all of the pizza restaurants in my town was chains yeah um so you know you had Domino's, you had jets uh hungry howie's little caesars benito's which is like a midwest i think they have a location in arizona and florida or something but um and then the town basically town that i'm part of came out asked me to join the chamber of commerce i was like absolutely oh. yep they cut the rhythm, cut the rhythm. Made me, made me pose with the fucking love on local. Hey, yeah, we love you guys. That's like, dope. blah, blah, blah. Uh, I got nominated for like best pizza in the city. I mean, I'm competing against a bunch of chains. So, I mean, it's, it's like, hard to do, man. Right. You're talking about the Holy Trinity. <laughs> but Domino's, that, Pizza but our Hut, Little Caesars. Our pizza's obviously better because we're not just mass, you know, all of it. Whatever. Got nominated. The but, chamber was like, hey, congratulations, like, pay us, you got nominated. I was like, okay, yep, sounds great. Nominations come out, not on the list. Hey, chamber, what's going on? Gotcha. Not, not on the list. Uh, yeah, one member had a problem with you uh, being a food truck, so we had to leave you off maybe next year. Like, you guys made me come and pay dues because you wanted me to be a part of the chamber, and now... Am I not part of the chamber? What's, what's going on here? Um, and they were like, yeah, sorry. We're really sorry about it, but this one person, and I was just like, okay, that's interesting. Whatever. A week later. Is that, was that, is that really what you said? That's interesting, whatever? Or like, what, what was the real thought process? Like, fuck, fuck them. Well, fuck, yeah, uh, fuck you. <laughs> like, this is, so like, this is, the, I went to high school here. So yeah, right dude. outside Ann Arbor. Did you know, did you know the dude or the I'm woman? pretty sure I know who it is. Okay. I'm pretty sure I know who it is. All right. It got political. Yeah, I bet A it week did. later, a city council member at like just a meeting, unprompted after they were meeting about the water treatment plant, unprompted at the end of the meeting was like, hey, I want to talk about the food trucks, like, there's a problem. We got to do something about this food truck that's parked in perpetuity. And it got reported in our local paper. And I was just reading it one day and just said, wow, that's a subtle shot. Nobody even, <sighs> not, not, nothing ever got said to me. I'm like, interesting. So I went and posted the article. I'm like, hey, to the town's Facebook group page. And, said, hey. and you are a member at this moment on the business of commerce. Not a, no, not you're not a member. Not right now. Oh, at that at moment, that moment, yes. yeah. You at paid your moment. dues. You're on the. You're on the, and they didn't come talk to you. Didn't come talk to me. This is, and then this is later. Councilwoman says, "Hey, got to get rid of this guy. Got to get rid of this guy. Like, Should be paying taxes. Like it's like I live in the city. Yeah, like the person's property I'm parked on is paying like." tens of thousands of dollars of taxes a year because they own this huge like triplex building. Yeah. And she basically comes out and is like, don't like this guy. Yeah. I'm like, he bullied my kid. Right. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Uh, no, I would never, I'm five, five. I'm bullying a lot of people. Uh, hey, maybe size don't Napole matter. Napoleon syndrome here. So <laughs> fuck them. Fuck them. Uh, so I invite her, Hey, come down and, actually have a chat with me instead of just calling me out. Like, yeah. let's talk. Mm -hmm. Why, why, why do you got to throw those subtle jabs? She came and talked, was like, Oh, I love food trucks. I love food trucks. I love food trucks. And then echoed the same sentiment. So I was just kind of done. Did anything happen? No. Okay. Nobody ever came. All I right. just was like, I'm not dealing with all this bullshit. 
Yeah. Um, and then so happened at the time, that's when me and Zach, my co-founder, also connected. So it just kind of was like right moment, right time. Yeah. Um, Do you think that any of the other businesses were mad or uh, like upset about you? Because this is an interesting conversation. I've talked to owners who have like low key said that like it's not fair, like street like street food and and food trucks because you pay you do pay taxes you have to have all this overhead you oh, yeah. do all these things and then somebody can literally park in front of a 7-Eleven put up three tents and just be making bank I'm I'm on the side like that way so like if somebody were to come and like pop up a tent right in front of your shop mm-hmm. like without your permission unless it was like some sort of collaborative mm-hmm. event like I would be pissed off. Absolutely. But like, I, that was not the case. So yeah. yeah. If somebody were to go park downtown, like in front of, well, like this is small town downtown, but like if they were to go park right in front of my restaurant, yeah. like, yeah, I would have a problem with that for sure. I'm at the edge of town. I'm parked next to a bakery who does food. Like we're like doing a collaborative thing. Yeah. And that should have been that. Like uh, you are, I'm making you, these restaurants downtown are making a million dollars plus a year, probably. Yeah, you know, I'm a lowly food truck. Like you know, we're probably making a hundred k off of being sat in that parking lot than doing other events on off days. Yeah, so it's like, well, you are so, in Michigan, dude. The you could have had some little Caesars money coming. coming that's so come, funny because th- being thrown so, at the uh, the council. So there, many, dude. so the many people Caesar. were like, "You got slices?" It's like, no sorry like we're a food truck man he's like you got you got anything to go it's like no like we're making we're not like little Caesars is on the other side of town you can go over there it's we're different yeah but got it you're gonna have to wait you're gonna have to wait like eight minutes man can't do it time is money it is and a hot and ready is always ready hot it's five bucks it's a great deal your pies only take eight minutes to cook uh no but how how long? What's the bake time on your pies? Nine, like nine. Oh, okay. So uh, nine minutes yeah. <laughs> uh, through the conveyor. Yeah, nine minutes through the conveyor. Man, that's real nice. And I feel like training for squares is like so much fucking easier. Are you par baking your dough? No. Oh, okay. So we're going from raw. Won't do it. Do yeah. Ever, uh, why won't you do it? I so I par baked on my food truck. Um, I think it's. I think I think there's a right way to go about it for sure like i don't i don't knock par baking i'm just trying to do it true to the authenticity of the style Mm -hmm. so like in detroit we're all everybody's baking from raw okay Mm -hmm. they she likes it raw uh but (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh baby i like it raw oh baby you like it raw cue the music uh but i just i just think it's a i think it's a a uh, more true representation of the style. Um, I don't think it tastes as focaccia like, uh, which I like. It just kind of it, it melds together better for me, and it reminds me of like that back home taste. Yeah. So I'm really just trying to go for that authenticity. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not gonna. I don't knock people who par, but like, there's so many ways to to do it. Yeah. So it's like you know you have rules for like Neapolitan style pizza. Like you have to be like if you want to be a VPN or I think it's what it's called, whatever, but you've got to meet all these specific standards. I don't necessarily think it's that way for Detroit, but I just want to stick true to what people were doing from back home as much as possible. Of course. Um, What you know to be Detroit pizza. Absolutely. Yeah. So like, yeah, I par baked on my my truck um, and I like, I love it. Like the Frico looks way better. Like they're definitely more like Instagram picture worthy shots. So like, you know, we could make it prettier by par baking, but I just think the taste to me is more true to what we're kind of going for. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's that dough process? Like how long do those, how long are those, uh, squares proofing for raw? We'll, you know, stretch and fold a couple times. They're pretty much out an hour, uh, before, um, they're actually getting pressed out and portioned. And then they sit from anywhere from between an hour to two hours before we put them in the fridge, use for later. Um, I like to, I mean, we have limited space too. So mm-hmm. 
we try to go for at least like a 12 hour uh, process before like they're actually cooked. Sometimes it's shorter than that. Sometimes it's longer. Than so that. it's all right. So you, you bowl, you do your, you do your batch of yep. dough and then you let it rest and then you push them out. Yep. And then you let them sit for 12 hours and you bake them from there. So will you do sa same day? There's some that gets, yeah, like towards the end of the night. Yeah. It could be same day for sure. Okay. Um, and that's like a lot of places back home. That's what they do as well. Like, what is the best Detroit style pizza that I've ever had? Back home, Michigan. It's not Buddies. Motor City. It's not Buddies. That's all I'll say. That's all you're gonna say. It's not Buddies. Uh, <clears throat> so I've had different ones over the years. So like. Probably like five years ago, it would have been Louis, but like Louis now is not the same to me as it was back then. Like Buddies, also like the first couple times I had Buddies, amazing. Like, but there's just something about it. Like I don't know if they expanded too fast or whatever, what's going on, but it just doesn't taste. It just tastes more of like, hey, I'm coming to a restaurant that serves pizza versus like, hey, I'm going to a pizzeria. Yeah. Um, but I would say uh, Michigan and Trumbull is definitely up there, especially among the independent shops. Like those are that's my that's my go to pie, like downtown Detroit. Um, and then yeah, Louis is a classic, um, but not Buddies. Sorry, Buddies. I, sorry, Buddies. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. Well. When you came out here, did you did you try the Detroit tile pizza that was out that was oh. being cooked out here? So like oh, D Town, yeah, yeah. and uh, D Town, Do Daddy, yeah, Do Daddy, uh, Quarter Sheets mm -hmm. kind of does like a Detroit style um, ish. It's like really like just a square. It's yeah, yeah. Uh, Apollonia's, L Apollonia's, Little Dynamite, yeah, uh, LD. Uh, yeah, I've tried. Yeah, I. And you were like, man, no one's doing this right. No. This is gonna be fucking. E this is gonna be fucking easy, dude. Was that what you were no, like? No, absolutely not. Uh, look at I, these guys. I, I loved them all, but we. I definitely think we have our own, you know, variation of it. I definitely think we are probably the most true to the style of like from like a back home perspective, like an authenticity again. Um, I think there's different variations, like. I think, you know, Apollonia's and D-Town definitely make, I think they all make a great pie. I think they're all kind of different in, in their different ways. Um, I just, I just think that we can, we can make it more true to back home. That authenticity is really like what I'm looking for. Like, and what makes a Detroit style pizza authentic? It's, it's, you know, baking from raw. Okay. Uh, Sauce on top. Sauce and, on top of the cheese? Yes. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the steel pans that they're cooked in. So are you um, using Lloyd pans? No. You're using we use what we use? Steel, steel pans. PA products. PA products. PA, yeah. From Pennsylvania? Uh, I believe they're in Michigan, but. What are they? they are they real oil? They're. Oil they're, tins? They're, yeah, they, they came were used straight, straight from the fucking out of the factory. Yeah, just like the the grandmas and papas used to make rectangular blue steel pants. How much are these bad boys? How much are these bad boys? Uh, I don't remember the last time I bought. Uh, they might be like fifteen bucks or twelve bucks. Oh shit! Are you kidding me? So that's the th like the Lloyds say that the, like they're ready to go, right? Lloyds are fucking like fifty eight dollars a pan I know. now. Absolutely. Well, so I bought, you know, we bought like 300 of them when we opened. Yeah. And 300 Lloyds? No, no. Okay, PA. No, no, yeah. Okay. This is what everyone uses in Michigan, the PA no, pants. No, no. People probably use Lloyd pants too, but right. like our, I, so a lot of the older, I don't, I don't really know the process of what they're doing when they're opening a new shop, but like the original buddies is probably still using the pants that they've had. Like they're never going bad. Yeah. Um, like, I like the Lloyd pans. I just, like, the cost, I can't justify it. Like, so you've got to, we've got to spend more time seasoning them. So they come like that. We just can't, you can't just throw a pizza in there, though. Like, it'll stick. Yeah. Like, the first day on my food truck, when I was, like, launching 
my brand, it was called Honey's Pizza. Uh, I had like, I had tried to hold a friends and family like event. Half the pizzas were like sticking to the bottom of the pan. Ugh, and I oiled the, I thought I seasoned them. I was like, oh, ready to go. What are you seasoning your pans with? Just olive oil. Okay. No Crisco? No. All right. Just light, light coating of olive oil. You do too much, it'll be disaster. Yeah, it'll get too sticky. Oh, we want the vegan meats. We want the vegan cheeses. Are people coming up to you and asking you, do you have vegan options? Do you have vegan meats? Well, guess what? A lot of them are not that good, but there is one that reigns superior, and that is Beehive. Everything that they make at Beehive is levels ahead of what you can get in a grocery store. Their pepperoni, their crumbled sausage, their cheeses, there is no contest. And the owner is one of the coolest people I have ever met. They make incredible products that go on your pizza, and it is dope plant food. That's what they call it, and that's what it is. Beehive, the best. Look no further. It's Beehive, baby. Straight out of Nashville, good people, great product. Check them out. Interesting. I'm going to I'm gonna have, to, I'm gonna have to grab a couple of those pans. Yeah. We use Lloyd for everything. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if this guy's name. You know John Ren, Redon, Rez, Rez, Rendonzo? Sean? Sean. Sean Randazzo? Yeah, you ever meet him? Uh, yeah, I actually, so my first year that I went to Pizza Expo that didn't even know existed got as like a Christmas present from my parents. What year was he that? Was, that had been 2016. Okay. So he was there uh, selling, you know, Detroit style pizza yeah. pans. Um, and he was like, like one of the first booths when I walked in. Um, you know, he was just like, hey, come try Detroit style pizza. And back in 2016, I was like, the fuck is Detroit style pizza? Are you kidding me? So like, you, hold on. What the fuck hold are on. you talking hold about, on. bro? So <laughs> is this shit been around since like the 50s? Right. But we always just called it square, like square pizza. Okay. All right. Because Sean, who's a legend and no longer with us. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, RIP, he, he like really, you, he really put it on the map. A hundred percent. Yeah. No, I credit everything to him from yeah. like the revolution of it getting out to the West coast and not just being like Sicilian or I cook this in the pan. It has super cool Frico. It's like, Hey, no, like this is Detroit style pizza. Yeah. Like here are the pans. Here's how you do it. Like I, how I started my food truck, yeah. how I started doing Detroit style pizza was self-taught off of his YouTube videos. Yeah. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. Like literally would just go in, watch his videos, like how to make the dough, all of that. Yeah. You know, like Neapolitan, I felt like was a, I felt like it was an easy process. Like cause it's super simple. And I feel like Detroit is kind of the same way in that. But Sean just made it way easier. He was like, hey, this is what you do. This is when you should stretch and fold it. This is how long you should wait. This is the ideal dough temperature. Like, this is how much you're putting in. Here are the percentages. Like yeah. he gave you the fucking blueprint. Yeah. So it was just like, he made it easy for me. And it was just like getting going was instead of it being a longer drawn out process, it was like, okay, I'm comfortable with my dough. I mean, I always feel like getting better, trying to do different things, playing with temperatures, fermentation times, different, you know, different yeast amounts, just all of that. Like always kind of messing with it yeah. um, just to try to get it better. But, you know, for the most part, like it's pretty laid out. Like here's the formula. Let's go do it. Yeah. So I, I'm a big believer that, uh, there's no wrong way to do anything in pizza. No. Uh, especially like pan pizza is you have like, I feel like you have a lot more, you have, because you're just putting it into a pan, you can do crazy shit with hydration and stuff. Oh, yeah. So you can make, you can make 100%. a square with a oh. Frico that looks like Detroit, but it's probably not a Detroit style pizza. You know, like right. we do a sourdough, it's fucking high hydration. Oh, yeah. And it has a Frico and whatever, but like I probably a lot of people would argue that, that that's not a Detroit style pizza. You know what I mean? Just because you cook it in a square. Uh, sure. You know? Right. Um, but I was just going to piggyback off like what you said 
I had never heard of Detroit style pizza until my first expo. I think it would probably be the biggest thing I ever took from a pizza expo is I think I went out in 2016 as well. And I was like, what the fuck is this thing? And then Apollonia started taking pictures and I was like, how the fuck do I get that freak out? I actually, so before I moved out here, like saw him at pizza expo. He was doing like one of those, uh, like in the middle, uh, like the little, little seminars, cooking, thing, yeah. cooking, cooking demos. Yeah. Um, and I was like, holy shit, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah. And then I moved out to here. I was like, got to go try yeah. Apollonia. It's like, it's like first on my list. So like, was like, got to go. But it's just funny to like, I'd been making Sicilians for since for 10 years and yeah. I'd seen what a Sicilian was. And then it was just like watching like Tony Hawk do like a 1080. <laughs> it was like, what the <laughs> fuck is that? You know what I mean? Cause it's like, you see the, you see the caramelized cheese edges yeah. and then you taste it for the first time and you're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Because it's like so many different things. It's like cheesy bread. It's like, it, it's got that crunch it's, oh. and it's still soft and it's, all it's, it. It, to me, it's like one of the best pizzas. I love, I love a square. Yes. So a square, I always loved a square when I was younger. And the Detroit style pizza was just, it, it was like the pinnacle of pizza. The sauce on top, you get, you get that chunky sauce, you get the crispy All cheese, the and you get like a soft pillowy dough. Yeah. Like what's, what's better what's, than that? What's better than that? Yeah. And you see, you see Apollonia is like, my man is fucking making these in like tinfoil fucking pans too. I don't know, like that to me is crazy. Like him, just seeing him do that and like perfect it. It's like, yeah, like, yeah I'm just doing this in tinfoil. Like yeah, and like, <laughs> and like a half sheet. Just like, like a throw for, yeah, like, that you put a turkey in. Hey, look how good I do it. Yeah. <laughs> and hey. BD, but that's just somebody that got good at their craft, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. And he probably did a lot of that by not following the rules. You got to break the rules. Yeah, well, that was, uh, I mean, to this day, it's, and, and to, this, to this day, you still have people that come in to Hot Tongue and they're like, what the fuck is a Detroit style pizza? You know, like, I have this, I've had this conversation with a lot of people recently where, like, they're like, you know, the next, like, Detroit's on its way out. But I argue that, like, Detroit style pizza is still fucking, it's a big thing that's happening. I think that there's, like, a huge market for more places to just oh, yeah. sell squares. I mean, you don't need to limit yourself and only sell squares. You could do rounds and stuff, but you could specialize in just that style of pizza like you're doing. Mm -hmm. And people are still gonna find you and be like, what the fuck is this? Because right. especially on the West Coast, like people come out here and we have a tomato pie, we have a Sicilian and we have a Detroit. Right. We call them those things because that's how I grew up finding out what they were. Right. Sicilian, big thick crust, Detroit, you got the caramelized cheese, a tomato pie, you know, no cheese, maybe a little Parmesan. And then a deep dish is a, basically a fucking, a pie. Yeah. Literally. It's literally a yeah, pie. pie. Yeah. You know, and then people come in and, but they just don't get it. They don't, they, a lot of people on the West coast are like, uh, I'll have the deep dish. Everything's a deep dish. Yeah. I'll get the deep dish. And it's like, no, you want well, the, which, which deep dish? Yeah, right? <laughs> which, I mean, and they're not wrong want, right. because the dish is deep, but like, you know, you kind of have to do some explaining. So it's like, I mean, you probably don't have that problem right now at the ghost kitchen because people can read your menu. Oh. But like, if you have a, if you had a slice display or like, you know, there's got to be a right. certain amount of communication that oh, you're going to have to have explaining like, this, this is Detroit style pizza. Right. Yeah. And we're going to be like, I want to run a slice shop out of the new place. Yeah. Like, that's the main thing. It's like just getting those walk-in customers like, hey, just give me a slice. Like, we can't do that right now. Yeah. Obviously. But, yeah, just, like, explaining it to people. Like, a lot of people are, like, we get a lot of people. So, like, when the Lions were in the playoffs this past year, our Sundays got absolutely fucking bonkers. Like, yeah. Like, just starting at 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. was, like, huge order after huge order after huge order because all of the, there's actually a lot of Michigan transplants like living in LA. Yeah. Well, I no can, one's from here. Well, right. Yeah. I mean, very transient city, but, uh, it's just like, it was just crazy to me to see everybody come out. But then it's like, as soon as they were done playing, it was kind of like off the mind a little bit, but just, yeah. Explaining that to certain people because other people will order and be like, why am I paying, you know, 18 bucks, 19 bucks for a pie when it's like, what is this? Like, it's like, this is like, a, you can't really get this a lot of places. Like, yeah. There's three, three places, you know, 
I mean, including yourself now, there's like four, you sell a lot of slices. I mean, just like places that do like primarily Detroit style. I'd say there's like three places in the whole city. Well, it don't, I mean, and I don't even think that they, a lot of these places would say they're Detroit style pizza. I right. mean, maybe Doe Daddy would say, but he like he's doing mostly he's doing mostly squares. Little Dynamite is doing squares, but I don't right. know if like they would, I, they wouldn't call themselves no because he, those squares don't have really like the freak of those. Like, that's no, not, they're that's using like the Sicilian style pans yeah. too, so they're not getting like you can tell like on the edges you're getting more a little more crust. Which I love, Little Dynamite. It's great. It's like you can kind of clap. They're like almost like a mix of all three. Yeah, they're like a yeah. deep dish Sicilian. And Detroit. they cook from raw too. Yeah, yeah. So like D Town, Do Daddy, and and who else? And Detroit Pizza Depot. Oh, that's right. Well, no, you can't. Not yourself. <laughs> but who? Who? No, that's. I think that's other, like in terms of like only, only doing squares. Primarily yeah. like doing Detroit style squares, like or at least like. Detroit-ish style squares. I think, like those are the only three. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know another one off the top of my head. I, well, probably, I know like Pie Trap. Well, pie, does, pie or, Trap does a square. Right, uh, that's still great. And oh yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm more so saying like yeah, that's just primarily. Yeah, only me too. Do that. Me too. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, maybe Pie LA. They're downtown. Uh, when'd your brother get out here? Well, he was supposed to be out here yesterday. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Oh, what? that's a we're, He was supposed to be out here yesterday. Apparently, he's going to be out here tomorrow. How do you just, like, not come out to L.A.? Oh, sorry, missed my flight. Is he driving? No, his car got shipped here. His car's actually getting here today. Okay. So, so we'll see. Apparently, he's supposed to be out here tomorrow. I, hope, I hope you get did here. Did your man. brother quit your job? Quit his job to come out, come out here and, and dominate the pizza game? Yeah, he just wanted a, he just wanted a change. Um, and I was just like... Older or younger brother? Younger brother. Nice. I was like, why not, like... Get a little experience. Like my lease is up in June. I'm like, if you don't like it, you can move back. Yeah. But come out for three months, help us open this shop and, and let's go. And if you like it, stay. If not, you know. He he worked with me on my food truck a little bit. Um, he never really and he's worked in pizza too, but he never really uh he didn't stick with it. Um uh, he's just had a couple odd end jobs, you know, college, yeah, uh stuff like that. So um just kind of looking to for his next chapter and just kind of excited for him to be out here. Um, it's nice to have family out here too. Yeah. It's, it's definitely hard. You know, um, I, I feel like I'd stay in contact with my family pretty frequently. Yeah. All my best friends have a group chat that we FaceTime all the, all the time. So it's not really like we're ever missing anything. Like yeah. we're pretty good at communicating with each other. So that's really, that's really key because, you know, you come out here, it's like, don't really, I know my co-founder, you know, my GM also moved out. He ran my food truck with me. Um, he, uh, he came out here too. So, I mean, besides those two, when I moved out here, I was like, didn't really know too many people. Um, but then, you know, the pizza community kind of speaks to what you've talked about on this podcast multiple times. It's like LA is definitely one of the most kind of welcoming food communities that I've seen. Yeah. It's like going to Pizza Expo, you kind of get that vibe as well. I mean, everybody kind of has their, you know, cliques that they hang out with, but for the most part there, it's like everybody is trying to share their success with you. Yeah. Um, and I feel that way out here for sure, like yeah. very strongly. It's like, as soon as I go walk over to Ozzy's and introduce myself, Chris is like, oh shit, you know, I've been following you guys or, you know, coming here and meeting you for the first time, like, just like, hey, what's up, man? You know, just super welcoming. Yeah. Um, and just just everywhere, going over to Apollonia's, uh, you know, all the D town, you know, Ryan over there, just all the all the spots, just kind of being able to talk to people and them just be like, oh, hey, yeah, like not just a, hey, how you doing? Like, you know, fuck you. I hope you yeah, don't good, succeed. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Good yeah. luck. Hey, I'm not gonna. Yeah, it's not know. like that. No, it's not at like all. it's like Creed says, with arms wide open. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's what it's like here. If you guys were wondering what the pizza scene in LA like is like, just fucking it's, put on Creed. Where the homes wide open. Will you pick me higher? Yeah. I mean, I would almost recommend just going to the closest music source after this pod and blasting Creed. Just kidding. That's what the LA pizza scene's like. Yeah. It's Hello, my friend. You know my friend. See my Creed catalog. Now, my Creed catalog isn't. Feet from the edge. 
Get on the girl. Maybe six feet. All right, I'm done. I'm not, you don't, not, you, what? You, no, wait, I'm you a, got a shallow, you're shallow creep. I'm shallow. No, I just, hey, I, I know, I know that. Matt know the knows every song. Matt knows know every song from song. Human Clay. I'm dude. all over the place. I'm a big Jimmy Buffett guy. Oh, rest in peace, man. Rest in peace. Damn, dude. We lost a real one. Just getting him in the shop every day. It's like, that's how you start out your day. How can you not have a good day when you're just listening to fucking JB? <laughs> I Jimmy would argue, Buffett. I would argue you can't. Drinking, drinking on a boat. Drinking like, on the job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> Again, Detroit Pizza Depot does not blasted. They're blasted support. all the time. That's how they do their late night. Just <laughs> fucked up. Uh, I, I hope not, man. Hey, if you guys are watching this, you guys better not be getting fucked. Wait, up so wait, you're not you're not working two. those late nights. You're like, yo, guys, you got it. I'm going home. Good night. You work. No, to, you well, work I work Monday and Tuesday. I'm there till you know. One. Yeah, but you're not doing the two o'clockers, huh? No. I, I when we started I was yeah yeah you put your you paid your dues, uh like the first year I was working you know Friday Saturday it's very interesting that 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 is like the the pinnacle of your sales, be- yeah between those hours oh I wouldn't say it's the pinnacle I would just say for us it's worth it staying okay, open those okay. two hours All right. like you know we're I mean like a lot of other pizza shops like that prime time is between like six and eight and it hasn't been hard finding people that want to. St- work until two in the morning so all of our no all of our employees so like two of them have been with us a year one's coming up on a year um another one's been with us for uh like six-ish months almost i think yeah so it's like that was my main concern was just like how much turnover are we gonna have like can we get people to stay? And I think when you have that good, a good culture and you treat people the right way that like, they don't want to leave. Like yeah. people, like people want to work. Like we have people who ask us like for jobs every day. Now, do they have to go through the interview process and like kind of fit our culture? Yeah. Like, absolutely. Like we don't want to bring, I feel like you've probably talked about this on here before too. Um, but like, one person can kind of come in and ruin a lot of the stuff that you've built. Like, yeah, they, they're the COVID virus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, worse than the COVID virus. Well, I liked COVID. You enjoyed it when you got it? No, no. COVID like kind of all, like without COVID, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, no. Like, okay. Yeah, in I terms that. of that, like, cause I wouldn't have started making Detroit style pizza. Yeah. I would have been getting more and more events doing yeah, for COVID. That's what we're saying. We love COVID. No. We loved COVID. <laughs> um, tell me your culture in three words. Steel, grit, and love. Oh, baby. That's poetry. That was easy. That, that was, was easy. We got good. That on a, we got that on one of our shirts. Oh, yeah. God, that was good, man. Uh, just, you know, pans are made in steel. You want to kind of be hard like steel. Yes. Um, you know, just grit. Like, you got to be kind of gritty, I think, to work in a pizzeria. Um you know, it's not the cleanest job all the time. It's not the, uh, it's not the easiest. Like, you know, you got to come in and kind of just be ready for the day uh, and just kind of, hey, whatever shit gets thrown at me, like, I'm going to deal with it yeah. and just, like, move on to the move on to the next action item. Like, hey, I'm making this next pizza and I'm going to enjoy doing it. Yeah. And that's where the love comes in. It's <laughs> like, if you don't, you know, if you don't like coming in and making pizza, like, I don't necessarily want you working here like, mm-hmm. if you don't like our product like i don't you know why why would you work somewhere where you don't like the food like that just never made any sense to me yeah so you know love just love making pizza got to be a little gritty and got to be hard wow steel grit steel and steel love. grit and love baby yep. that's that's so detroit Absolutely. That reminds me of Michigan. Yeah. Steel, I mean, that's, grit, love. I mean, that's where we're from. Yeah. 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 You hear the, I mean, grit's such a. Are you the Tony Robbins of Michigan? <laughs> no, absolutely Damn. not. I'm I try to be I'm, I try I'm to be inspired super and I had goosebumps. I try to be saying. super positive, yeah. but yeah, you know. You have I, to be in this industry, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, negativity won't get you far. It's like, if you have the woe is me attitude all the time, you're just not, like it's, you're, you're not going to come in here and do well if you're like, whoa, is me. Like, shit's going to go wrong. Shit's yeah. going to go right. In life. It's really. like, it, that's a pizza shop is, pizza Pizza is life. Uh, you know, shout out Ted Lasso. So, man, I love a shout out. Shout out Ted Lasso. 
Pizza is life. And then what? Well, I forget that guy's name, but uh, who? Football is life. Oh, god, that was such a good show. So, oh. It is a good show. The Christmas episode. Oh. Season one was like, all right, funny. And then season three, it was like, man, like I'm about to cry. Yeah, no, this like is, every episode. Yeah, it was, was, it was deep. It was good. It was good. Uh, all right, let's do a little bit of rapid fire here. You ready? I was waiting for the rapid fire segment. Are you ready all for day. the rapid fire? Yep, let's go. Okay. What is the best flower? Grain craft. What kind? Grain craft what? what? I mean, we use the power. You, okay, good. All so. right, there we go. Cheese. Galbani. Oh, shit. Hot take. Uh, uh, what is the best oven? Best oven, best overall oven, I would say Pizza Master. <sighs> pizza Master. For Detroit? Uh, best oven for Detroit? Uh, I, honestly, I think Conveyor. Okay. Because you can control it, consistency, you can get a perfect bake every single time. What's one tool that a pizzeria should not not have? One tool that a pizzeria should not not have, uh, a brain. A brain. Yes. Who is the best person in pizza? I was going to say something kind of fucked up. Uh, Do I'm, it. No. We've already gotten real fucked up in this All one. All right, the best person in pizza, it's got to be Papa John. Respect. Worst person in pizza. <laughs> Papa John. Okay, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Fuck Papa John. Okay, fuck Papa John, but yo, Papa John. So, well, actually, can I revise? Best person in pizza, I would say Shaq. Shaq. I fucking love seeing Shaq in those, in those commercials. I could see Shaq just sell anything, dude. You know Sha what I'm saying? I mean, Shaq can sell a... He's with the General. He's on a Papa John's commercial. I don't know. What, what can't he do? He, he does, he's, so, he's a sick DJ. yeah. You don't want to upset Shaq. Shaq Fu was like one of, one of like the sickest, wackest video games back in the day. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I had his cassette tape, his fucking cassette tape. The Shaq rap album? Yeah. Yeah. Where is your hometown? Uh, Celine, Michigan. And where's that? How far away is that from Detroit? So it's right outside of Ann Arbor. People may be more familiar Rudy, with Rudy, Rudy. No, no, no. That's Notre Dame. Yeah, it's in Ann Arbor. Uni University of Michigan. It, where's Ann Arbor? I mean, where's Notre Dame? Uh, South Bend, Indiana. Oh, yeah. I thought the Irish were in Michigan. The Irish are everywhere. I thought Notre Dame was in Michigan. So, well, so get this. Rudy, what a, a fucking good movie. Apparently though. Savannah, Georgia has the second biggest St. Patrick's Day uh, in all of the U.S. outside of Boston. Well, there's a shitload of Irish people in Savannah, Georgia. Well, you never would have thought that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. The United States is crazy. Man, I learned something today. I thought I thought that was in for what the yeah. fuck? Ann Arbor is just University of Michigan. Michigan, oh. Michigan Wolverines? Is that well, a thing? Yeah, yeah. That's I th yeah, I'm getting those two and things. And then Detroit we're like 30-ish minutes from. Okay. So like we're just southeast Michigan. You ever go to uh, is, Detroit? Is there a Lancaster or Lan Lansing? Lansing, yeah, middle of the state, yeah. capital. Yeah. yeah, I got a buddy out there. I was going. I've been to Lansing a couple times. That's interesting. That's a nice area. I don't know. It's a really nice area. Is good, it? Good pizza there. Great bars. Great bar. Oh yeah, college, great bars. College. Great college bars. town there for sure. Oh yeah, if you want to drink, you go to Lansing for sure. <sighs> there's no, there's no lack in that. Uh, when, when it's cold and the sun only shines for a hundred days a year, it's kind of hard to. To not. Yeah. I tell you what, seasonal depression. It's a real thing. Yeah. As soon as I moved out here, quality of life went from like here to like, holy shit, the sun is, is there. That's so true. I keep waking up. Yeah, I know. I was, I oh, lived shit. in the uh, Pacific Northwest until oh. I was 20 and it was the same thing coming out here. I was like, I can't think of anywhere else I'd ever want to live. Yeah. Like Washington, Except number maybe one. A lot of other places now. That Michigan, it's so number two in terms of like cloudy days. Yeah. Really? Michigan's because we have we're, we have the lake effect shit so yeah it's fucked up. What is the best Eminem album? I mean the original Marshall Mathers. Yeah, it's a LP. it's really hard to top that one. Yeah, you're not you're not beating that. The second one was pretty fucking fire. The second too. one was good too. Uh, what was it? It's Ken uh, Kinney from Curtain Connecticut. Call? You automotive piece of shit. What? Curtain call. Mm hmm. Curtain call. Or was it encore? Encore was all right. Those See, those, those, got, those albums were getting a little 
a little weird. I mean, Eminem's widely recognized, but Eminem isn't really the. I wouldn't say we all love Eminem, but oh, he's not. He's you not guys necessarily are like, like our. It's D twelve, right? Well, no, we don't really like D twelve either. What? D twelve was good. They had a couple songs. Come on, they had a couple songs. All right, Obi Trice. Yeah. See, I. What is Detroit music known for? Motown. Right. Yeah. I'm into. I love Motown. I'm a big Earth Wind. I mean, it's Earth, all right. Earth, Motown, Wind and, Earth, Eminem. Earth, Earth, come Wind, on, Earth, my Wind boy. And, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. You know, Marvin Gaye. Yeah, they're all Aretha, right. Aretha Franklin. Okay. Yeah, they're all. They're all just average. <laughs> yeah, those know. are okay artists. No, those those get played constantly in the show. Bitch, I'm gonna kill you. That Jimmy Buffett, and then you know, like the 2000s hip hop R and B. Yeah. At least lately, we've been we like listening to all those you know early 2000s tracks. Get the old little John on. You know, oh, you're some, talking about some, at the shop? Some Nelly. Yeah. 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 yeah that, the classics. Just, yeah. Those are our classics now. Well, let's wrap this up with the final question since we're already talking about music. Who is the greatest artist or band of all time to you? To me? I my I mean my favorite's Jimmy Buffett, man. Nice. He just puts me in that positive vibe, like mind state. I'm on a fucking boat in the middle of nowhere and I'm just having a good, good old fucking time. Respect. Are you gonna go to Margaritaville if you go out to Vegas? Uh no. Damn. Not since he just stop in not at the since flamingo. He, nah. Okay. Not, well the flamingo's going down, I think. I love the flamingo. Yeah, they're tearing. It smells like shit. I think they're tearing that down. Oh, all right. Well, everything that I love is just for the being Oakland, tor torn down. Oakland A's are going. So, what? Yeah, the Oakland A's are going to where the flamingo is. They're tearing down the flamingo, or maybe it's the Tropicana. It's one of those two. And the Oakland A's are going. They're going to Las Vegas. Yeah. Fuck yeah! All right. Well, you learn something new every day. There you go. I'm not a sports guy. You love sports? Oh yeah. I flew back. For the Lions playoff game, and then went up to San Francisco for the NFC Championship game. So, I'm a fucking diehard Lions fan. Like, you were you went to the, you were the, the game they played San Francisco? Yeah. Damn. Too, drove, ba too bad. Drove up there. Yeah, it sucked, but I'm sure it was fun to be there. Oh, absolutely, lifetime. Uh, so where do we go to get in contact with you? Uh, you go to at Detroit Pizzas. Uh, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and then uh, we are located at 358 uh, West 38th Street, Los Angeles, California. We're uh, about two blocks from BMO Stadium and the Coliseum. And the new spot? New spot's going to be at 6219 Franklin Ave. Uh, and that is in Hollywood. Uh, yeah, come on out right next to For the Wind Burgers, uh, right by the Capitol Record build building. Um, yeah. Hopefully your brother makes it out. We'll see. We're gonna check on that as soon as we get off the uh, off the pod here to make yeah. sure uh, he can see if he got off the plane. I'll give know. him an update. Make sure he gets here uh, during the intro. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. He never made he it. Actually, uh, uh, yeah. Actually, there's gonna be a hot tongue too, and it's located at six one nine oh, Franklin shit. Avenue. Oh shit! Yeah, I'm just joking, dude. Um, uh, congratulations yeah, on that. Thank you, man. Appreciate thank you for it. coming on. Yeah. I really appreciate you making the time coming up here yeah. or coming over here. Actually, we're not that far if you're in Hollywood. No, it wasn't bad. Probably bad. Yeah, fifteen minutes. Uh, thank you, Hunter. No, thank you, Alex. Appreciate Later. it. I don't wanna know.